Hello and welcome to Art Masters. I'm Mrs. Piper and today we're going to learn about Jerome Tiger and his Native American story. This first slide shows you where Native Americans lived over 200 years ago. So in the upper left hand corner, we can see that there's a lot of orange. That's where the Native Americans lived to an, over 200 years ago. Today, down in this corner, most of it's yellow. Most of this land is where non-Native American, uh, Native Americans live. And so we're going to learn about why that happened or how that happened as we learn more about Jerome Tiger and his art. Um, he was a, Na a Native American. He was from the Creek tribe primarily. He had some relatives that were Seminole. And um, over 150 years ago, his relatives were forced to move from another part of the country. Now, I am sure some of you have moved in your lifetime from a new house, maybe from a different city, um, different state. But when you moved, you probably had all your things in a truck and you drove by car. Now, when the Native Americans were moved, they were forced to move, they had to walk and they had to carry everything. And they had to walk 700 miles. And so we're gonna learn about the Trail of Tears that was this journey for these Native Americans. And so in this picture, Jerome Tiger has painted, untitled, Trail of Tears. He's painted it in um, soft colors to kind of create a quiet and sad mood. You can see that it's cold, their hair is blowing, their blankets are flapping in the wind. Um, they're standing in snow, it's cold. Many people died on this journey because they didn't have enough food and because it was too cold and they didn't have the right clothing. And so that is why this horrible time is called the Trail of Tears. This is another painting of Jerome Tigers showing you a cold kind of sad time by painting it in blues and purples, which we call cool colors. You can see again that the people are wrapped in blankets and blankets were important for them, to them. They wove them. They often had special patterns woven into the blankets. And when you work on your art lesson, you're going to be creating your own blankets as part of your design. And back in this picture again, it's cold. You don't see the bottoms of their feet. They're in snow. You can see the snow swirling. So it's going to get cold to the, for these people. Now, there were five main tribes that were considered what um, the civilized tribes of Native Americans, and they are the um, Choctaw, Cherokee, Seminole, the Creek, and the Chickasaw. Um, and uh, this is, these two groups are where Jerome Tiger's relatives came from. And then the middle of there shows a picture of the Trail of people marching on the Trail of Tears. So this is the five main civilized tribes. And these are the seals of the five civilized tribes. And when I say civilized, it's what the, native, uh, the settlers, the white settlers referred to them as because these tribes were more like the white settlers. They had schools, government, um, churches, and they had uh, more of a law enforcement that were what that was typical of white settlers communities. This picture of what's now Oklahoma was the Oklahoma Territory or Oklahoma has actually a little bit of a panhandle up here. And this part right here is where Jerome Tiger's relatives settled where the Creek Native Americans were. I mentioned that the Native American tribes had their own law enforcement. And this is a painting of what was called a light horseman. That was the equivalent to a policeman in the Native American tribes. And here's Never Get Away. He is, this man on the left is being punished for something. And this is the light horseman who's taken charge here. And he's painted this picture so that you really focus on the light horseman by making his shirt stand out more than the rest of the background, which background and the body would kind of blend together. Corn was very important to the Native Americans and so were ceremonies. 
and this is a ribbon dancer from the Green Corn Festival, one of their ceremonies to honor corn, which was a very important crop to the Native American. And he's painted this ribbon dancer with no background or foreground. He wants you to look right at the ribbon dancer. And you can tell that she's moving the way her fringe is moving here. Her dress is kicked up, her leg is, and her leg is sticking out. And so is her arm. You can, see, you can just imagine her twirling and swirling around with her ribbons. And he's even painted the ribbons swirling around her body as well. Now, Jerome not only was a great artist, he was a great athlete. He played stickball, which we see a picture of here. And he also was a champion boxer. And this game is called stickball. And this painting is called One Down. So one is down on the ground. And stickball is very much like lacrosse that we play today, or maybe even hockey. But you can see that it's a very active game. And you have to be very physically um, able to play this game because you're jumping and reaching. And stickball uses two sticks versus the one that you use when you play lacrosse or hockey. I said that he was physically fit. He was the model for this sculpture that he made of a stickball player. And he's making it in clay that's going to be work, um, molded in with bronze. And this um, picture shows him working on that sculpture. So not only was he a painter, he also was a sculptor as well. When he was in art school, he got a job working for um, a medical textbook company and he would draw the human body. And so he really got to be quite good at drawing the human body. And you can see that he knew how to sculpt the body as well. Not only was corn important to their cultures, so was the buffalo. And this is a picture called Snow Charge of someone hunting down a buffalo. This is gonna provide a lot of food, um, help clothing and shelter and tools, all from different parts of the buffalo. And it looks like it was quite a task to be able to hunt down the buffalo if you have to ride your horse in snow to do it. Now, not only was um, Jerome Tiger a creek, he was a seminal. And this is a series coming up of seminal um, Native Americans. And they lived in the Everglades part of South Central Florida. And this picture is a little different because he's painted plants growing in the front and what we would call the foreground. And he has some plants in the background and you can see just a little faint plant behind the canoe. And he's painted it in very light colors because he wants you to appreciate how quiet this um, person was as they were gliding through the Everglades. They didn't want to be seen. The Seminole were the only civilized tribe that didn't get forced to go on the Trail of Tears. And they did that by hiding out in the Everglades. And so that other picture shows them quietly moving around. And here's um, a man that's observing the enemy. He's hidden in the plants in the Everglades, watching to make sure that everyone is going to be safe. And he's painted him with most of the detail up here where you can see he's looking and observing and barely you, can you see where his legs are here. So he wants you to see that this man was hidden in the plants. The, um, the main chief of the Seminole around this time that the Trail of Tears was taking place in like 1836, um, Osceola was the Seminole chief and Jerome Tiger thought he was wonderful and he painted him many times. He was very impressed with his leadership and the things that he did as a person. And he liked his headdress, wrapped fabric here, and probably big plumy feathers that he did. And that was typical of what Osceola wore as a chief in the Seminole tribe. Osceola defiant one. Defiant means someone that's going to argue or stick up for something, not go with the rules. And he was able to keep hidden and keep his people hidden for a long time. But finally, um, the US Army or soldiers talked him into having a meeting to call a truce. And a truce is a promise for peace. But things didn't go well at this meeting. He did agree to go show up there, but things were not going well. 
he's stabbing this treaty and he looks very angry because they they changed what they had told him when he showed up at the meeting and you could see the by the way he painted his body that he was very angry with what was going on the meeting did not go well and Osceola ended up being put in jail this picture shows facing Seminoles and if you could see very small down here 1803 and 1903 so this painting that he's made to show you how the Seminoles changed over the hundred years with the influence of the white settlers for hundreds of years the Seminoles would dress with the wrapped headpiece and the plume. But as the white settlers became more of an influence, they changed their look, the feather style changed. They started wearing hats that were more typical of the white settlers. And so this is kind of showing you how subtly they were losing their culture as they got exposed to the white settlers. Now a medicine man is um, very important in the Native American tribes. Um, he helped heal people and here he is healing this person lying down on the ground on a brightly colored blanket and he's painted this whole picture in bright primary colors and so this has a more happy and upbeat positive feeling than some of his other artwork and so this shows you that the medicine man was important in their culture. This is another picture that created a kind of a quiet and sad mood, lost love. Um, this person down here is feeling sad about the loss of this person that's up on stilts. And they're up on stilts to um, protect them from wild animals and also bring them closer to the spirit world. And this was a practice that was done years ago in the Native American tribe. And again, he's not, there's not a lot of, not a detail and it's painted in kind of a quiet and sad color palette that helps you feel the sadness that he was expressing in his art. And this is the last slide of Jerome Tigers that we're gonna to see today, Moon Over Journey. And it makes a nice ending photo of people walking off into the, the moon, the evening. Um, it again is painted in kind of a cool color palette except for the moon and the flesh tones. Um, but it looks snowy. He's painted the snow trail there and it kind of gives you a quiet, almost sad ending, wondering what's going to happen to these people. Um, around the time he painted this, uh, Jerome Tiger died at a very young age. He was only 26 years old. He had a wife and children and he was able to um, support them with his art. Many of the artists we learn about over the years did not earn money as artists until too late. Um, he grew up on a reservation and he wasn't exposed to toilets, indoor toilets and plumbing and telephones until he went to school when he learned English for the first time. And he was able to do some very amazing things in his short lifetime. And his style of painting has influenced others and it's referred to as in the Native American art world as Jerome Tiger's style. And at his um, memorial service, they presented it in Creek, Seminole, and in English. And the next few slides show you what kinds of lessons you can be doing with your projects. So in the upper right hand corner, we have what the kindergartners through second graders will be doing. You're going to be making your Native American in a, a pattern blanket. And third graders through fifth graders will be doing this version of a Native American wrapped in a blanket. And then there's another picture with some more elaborate backgrounds that would be more of a fifth grade level. And you will be working on your projects either at home or with your teacher in your classroom. And I hope you have a wonderful time um, learning about Jerome Tiger and creating art in his style. And I hope you have a wonderful Thanksgiving and I hope to see you in 2021 in person. Thank you.